Okay, in this problem, we're going to explore the way that vectors are um, worked with on a coordinate plane. And so the first thing we're going to do is find the coordinates of AB. And so I've graphed AB. And so the vector AB is just the vector go starting at A, which is what we refer to as the initial point, and ending at B, which is what we call a terminal point. And when we want to find the coordinates for a vector, what we're really saying is, if that vector was moved, because a vector is about direction and length, the location of a vector doesn't matter. That's not how we work with ve vectors. And so instead, we can think about a vector as just being at 0, 0 as an initial point, and then whatever the terminal point in is, is the coordinates of the vector. Well, the way we do that, conceptually, is we think about um, how do I take this point A and make it 0, 0? Well, I would do that by subtracting 3 from the x and adding 2 to the y. So if I'm going to do that to the A, then I have to do the same thing to the B. I need to subtract 3 from the X and add 2 to the Y. Well, what it actually turns out to be is it's always going to be the terminal point minus the initial point. So that means AB, which we write like this, is just going to equal, well, 11 minus 3, subtract the X coordinates, and 5 minus a negative 2, which is exactly what we said we needed to do, which is adding 2. And so AB equals 8, 7. That's the vector. So if I were to move this over, and, and my points are all very much estimates here, because we don't really care about location too much. We just want to be able to do the math. And so that means that the in ending point now would be 8, 7, if that's how we, another way to look at that vector. Then the other one we're going to look at is DC, and so D is the initial point. C is the terminal point, so it looks like that. And I think it's useful to see this because when we move this over, we know that it's in the third quadrant, so our x should be positive and our y negative. And so DC is just going to be the same thing, terminal point C minus the initial point. So 4 minus a negative 6 and negative 7 minus 2, which gives me... 10, negative 9, and that fits in exactly with what it appears should be our answer if we put these together. So if I take my two vectors and I bring them down here, the next thing I want to do is I want to add them together. So there, there are our two vectors, and I want to add these two vectors together. Well, the way that you add vectors together is by actually placing their endpoints, the endpoint of one with the or initial point of one on the terminal point of the other. So either like that, and you can see that it's going to end at this point right here, or you can actually do it the other, other way around, like this, where we, where we put them end to end, and you can see how they ended up at the same point. I'm going to go ahead and do it like this, just because we have the AB first. And so AB and then DC is going to look like this. And the, way, the nice thing is, calculation-wise, all you're doing is adding up the X's and the Y's. 8 plus 10 is 18. 7 plus negative 9 is negative 2. So the coordinates of this new vector, which is going to be this vector right here, what we call the resultant vector, are 18, negative 2. You can tell that I very much sketched this out because that doesn't look like 18, negative 2, but it is based on the calculations. So the last thing we want to do is find the magnitude and direction of that vector. So that means finding this angle, that's the direction, and then finding the magnitude is just the length. Well, the length is the easiest because the length it just ha turns out to be the um, Pythagorean theorem where 18 is one leg and 2 is the other leg. And so the length of a vector, if you have if x comma y, is always just going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared because of the Pythagorean theorem. So for me, the magnitude of this vector is going to be the square root of 18 squared plus a negative 2 squared, x squared and y squared, which turns out to be the square root of 328. And we're going to round to the nearest hundredth on this. And so we take the square root of 328, and we get 18.11, or approximately 18.11. That is the magnitude of this vector. And then the direction, well, in the direction, we're going to use tangent, because 2, or negative 2, but 2, for this triangle, is the opposite side. And 18 is the adjacent side. So you're going to say tangent of the angle we want equals 2 over 18. So in our calculator, we're going to do the inverse tangent 
of 2 over 18 so we can find out what the angle is. Notice I'm doing the positive of 2 over 18, the absolute value, um, because you're, you're just talking about a right triangle now, and that, so the negative doesn't apply in a right triangle. So that's going to give me a 6.34 degree angle. It's south of what we call east, and so it's 6.4 degrees south of east. Because we think about it north, south, west, east, this angle is below the east, so it's south of it, um, and so we call it south of east. So the magnitude 18.11 and the direction 6.34 south of east.